We're either going to live or we're going to die. If we're dead, we'll have to deal with that. If we're alive, we've got to deal with being alive. If you want to understand why a generation is grieving over John Lennon's death tonight, you have to understand where it all began. Not really in the cellars of Liverpool, but in the black ghettos of America, where rhythm and blues was born, and where, 25 years ago, it emerged into white America as rock and roll music. We're going to rock around the clock tonight, but you should have right so. John Lennon was 14 years old when he first heard Rock Around the Clock, the song which became the international anthem of rock and roll, and which, as the theme music for Blackboard Jungle, seemed to link the music with youthful rebellion, even violence. Lennon listened to the music of Chuck Berry, Fats Domino, Little Richard, Elvis Presley. As a member of the generation that came to adolescence in the first days of rock and roll, Lennon, with Paul McCartney and George Harrison, set out to play this music. In the process, they changed the music, and with it, the cultural landscape of the Western world. They started as the quarrymen, leather-jacketed, greasy-haired imitators of American rock and roll. By 1960, they were playing the lowest dives in Hamburg, Germany, under the name The Beatles. It was a Liverpool record store owner named Brian Epstein who gave them the Beatle look, the Edwardian suits and ties, the pointy boots, and the mop-top haircuts. By 1963, Lennon, McCartney, Harrison, and drummer Ringo Starr had conquered Europe. And in 1964, a combination of brilliant promotion and a desperate need for Americans to forget the recent murder of John Kennedy made the Beatles' first appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show a national event. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all a textbook case of hype and mass hysteria except that the beatles and especially john lennon weren't playing by the rules lennon wrote an acerbic bestseller in his own right whimsically juggling language and ideas and most important the music began to grow more complex the lyrics more subtle. There are places I remember all my life. Though some have changed to see the sky with diamonds. By the time Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band appeared in 1967, thematically integrated with powerful, evocative songs, rock and roll music had passed over a cultural barrier once thought impassable. Among the Beatles, John Lennon was the point man in the growing confrontation with mainstream culture. And in time, he would meet and fall in love with avant-garde artist Yoko Ono. All we are saying is give peace a chance. In the decades since, John and Yoko held public demonstrations for peace and threw themselves into a wide range of therapies and movements. Five years ago, John Lennon retreated behind the walls of New York's luxury apartment, the Dakota, to keep house and to raise a child. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. In grieving so greatly for a figure who was, after all, a musician, this generation is reminding itself again that for it, for the millions who felt as John Lennon did, the music was the shaping impulse of its life and times. Jeff Greenfield, CBS News, New York. We'll have more on John Lennon later in the broadcast, and CBS News will offer a special report, John Lennon, The Dream is Over, tonight at 11.30, 10.30 Central Time.